G'day guys and welcome to me lab. In this, our 12th episode in our Bogenstein 3D tutorial series for Godot 4, we're going to be adding in another level, getting that information on our HUD and a few other little tinkering bits around the edges. So let's uh, have a look at where we left off last lesson and then get into our WWSS. So in our last lesson, we added the visual representation, that animation of our player's face um, in our heads up display. So we can sort of get a better idea of what our health is like even without the percentage. So that's what we did in our last lesson. Let's uh, have a quick look at the game itself so we refresh our memories and then we'll look at our WWSS. All right, guys, well, let's have a quick tour of the game as it stands. So we'll jump on in. Here it is. We've got our couple of guards that we can shoot. If I can line my gun up correctly, there we go. They're dead. You can see their dead animations and their, their dead sprites. I can collect ammo and that is represented in the HUD. Um, our health is animated on the screen there. Excellent. All right, so I think the time has come to look at our WWSS and then let's jump straight on in and get some coding done. What are we doing in this lesson? Well, we're adding the second level and transitioning to it, as well as adding in just that extra info in our HUD. Why? Well, so we can start making a more well-rounded game, a more complete game. We need to have different levels, so we're getting that done today. Skills you're gonna to need today, where well, you're gonna to need to be able to understand and apply how to add new scenes, um, how to work with mesh instances and collision shapes, as well as GD script. Your success today will look like you being able to move to level two from level one, and that'll show in your HUD. Before we jump into the tutorial, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, why don't you give the channel a subscribe? I'm just going to interrupt myself here with a bit of a disclaimer. You see, I wear a lot of hats. I'm a teacher, I'm an educational neuroscientist, I'm a Godot dev, I'm a musician, I'm a terrible inventor of useless garbage, and all of those things are covered here on this channel. And I hope that you're keen to join me on that journey so we can all uh, grow more awesome together. But if you are laser focused on a particular topic like Godot, I don't want to mislead you and you get annoyed that I'm doing a lot of non-Godot stuff. So everything's divided into playlists to make life a bit easier for you. So only subscribe if you really want that full experience of uh, all the different learning. Uh, otherwise, just follow the right playlist for you. All right, let's get back to the video. The channel a subscribe um, and you can stay up to date with everything that we're doing. All right, let's get into it. So jump into Godot and get your global script up first. We're just going to do something in there. So let's create a new variable called var current scene. Oops, scene. And we're going to make it equal to one. So when we start the game, we're saying that we're on level one, basically. Uh, actually, current scene. Let's make that current level. Var current level one. That's how we're going to start off. So save your global script, and then we're done with that for now. Now we want to create a new scene altogether. So come up to the top, click on the plus. It's going to be a 3D scene. Click on that, and let's rename it to level two straight away. So we've now got a node 3D there that's renamed to level two in our new scene. Let's save it. So we save our level two scene. There we go. Now, if you remember the way we sort of create our floor and everything, so we're going to want to grab a mesh instance 3D. That's how we're going to start. And I'm going to rename this one to be floor as well. So here's our floor mesh instance. All right. Now, it has been a while since we did this. So hopefully you remember, but we'll just go through it again anyway. So we come across, click on our mesh. We want to have a new plane mesh as our floor for this one. Um, let's get our actual 3D view up. There we go. So there's our new plane mesh so far. Um, we don't want to leave it like that though. We go down and click on geometry, click on material override and then on the empty and we can click new standard material 3D and then we click on that little sphere that appears and that gives us some new options. So if we come down here until we find albedo, click on that and then this texture empty, we're going to add our stone floor to. Drag that over. I think I missed. Gee whiz. <laughs> Try again. There we go. All right. So there's our stone floor. Now it's a bit bit small at the moment we want a much bigger game than that don't we much bigger level so let's go down to the bottom where we've got transform right down here in node 3d and our scale we might make this like um 20 by 20 something like oh sorry by 20 the wide can stay at like one that doesn't matter 20 by 20 but you can see now obviously that our bricks are a little bit distorted so let's go back up to where we had all that albedo stuff and find uv1 click on that and here is where we're going to mess around now what if we made our thing like 40 by 40. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty happy with that. It might look a bit ordinary when we actually go into the game, but we can always work that out later. So let's just save that as floor. That is our floor done. Now, to get our collision shape so we don't, so we don't fall through it, we come up to where we've got this mesh at the top. Click on that and click on Create Tri-Mesh Static Body. Click on that and that will automatically give us, if I click on it, give us a static body and a collision shape there. So you don't have to do that physically. All right. 
That's that done. Well, we need more than just a floor, don't we? So let's click on our level two root node again, click on the plus, make another mesh instance 3D. Let's call this one wall. And then for this one, we're gonna go over, click on our empty, and this time we'll do a box mesh. Um, and in our geometry, we click on empty, click on new standard material, click on the sphere, come down to albedo. We're gonna um, take over gray stone wall. Excellent, and now let's go down to our transform like we did last time, all the way to the bottom there and our scale. So this is gonna to need to be what, like 20? Actually, no, it'll need to be like 40, won't it? 40 by one is fine, I think, by 10. Oh, no, did that wrong. Z can stay as one, Y can be like five. Okay, there we go, something like that. All right, so the Y is five, but we actually wanna move this up. So negative 2.5 on the transform. Oh, hang on, 2.5, not negative 2.5. There we go, 2.5 on the transform, just pulls that up so it's flat on the ground and not continuing on below the ground. So if we zoom out, you can see that's the whole sort of width there. If we push it back to the edge, we uh, can make ourselves a wall, but obviously it still looks like crap because it's all um, stretched. So let's go back up to our um, UV one here. So to find that you want to be in the geometry one, you want to click on that sphere and you want to scroll down past albedo, which we did before, down to you find UV one. And this is where we're going to do some things. So what if we made our X 20 and our Y 10? Oh, no, that's no good. What if we made our X 40 and our Y 10? Oh, actually the Y seems to be more of the problem. 40 and five, that looks all right from here. All right, let's just be happy with that for now. So I'm going to have my wall selected. I'm going to go over and click on mesh, create tri mesh static body again. So that's now got its own um, collision shape and everything too. And rather than making a bunch of new walls manually, I'm just going to like duplicate these. So there's another one. If I just make it so I can actually box in the whole level, there we go. But I want more. Now this one, actually, I'm going to do two of these on the inside like this, just to create a little bit of interest. And let's um, let's actually make this one a bit shorter, hey? So for our wall three, let's push that over that way a bit. For our wall two, let's pull it this way a bit. Cool. Now I wanna do another duplicate of this one and I'm going to rotate this one. So transform and here in our rotation, uh, X, X or Y, I'm not sure. Yeah, I was wrong, always happens. Why? There we go. So then we can just use this one for our um, either end, right? So do that, push it to the back. How's that looking? Oh yeah, I think that might need to come back a bit more so there's a bit more space. All right, cool. And now we can just take this one, uh, which was wall four, I believe. No, wall three, two, which wall was it? Five, all right, duplicate wall five which becomes wall six, pull that one all the way back to here, right? Like that. Oh yeah, maybe that can just go shoved over a bit more. There we go. So just something like that. So there's just a slight bit of interest in it. Um, obviously it doesn't matter too much. This is me just trying to get something done so that we can uh, mess around with it. There we go. Anyway, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna save that. What do we need to do to make this more interesting though? Well, we can't just leave it like that. That's uh, rather boring. So let's just close all these little things. So I've got some space here. All right, so our level two probably needs some enemies, right? So we come down here, find our guard.tscn and we're just gonna drag a few guards in. Um, is gonna be the way to go. So let's just plonk a few guards in here. There we go. Maybe some ammo as well. Always need some ammo to take on these Nazis. So let's dump some ammo in here. And guess what? We're also gonna need a player, aren't we? So come down and find our player scene, drop our player in there as well. All right, so that's the basics of a whole new level. Save that. Now, the trick is joining all these things together though, isn't it? So what we're gonna to wanna to do now is actually go back to our world scene. So let's click in our world scene, there it is there, which we had a quick look at at the start of this lesson. So what we're gonna do now in our world scene is we need to create some way for our player to trigger something that takes them to the next level. So I'm just gonna make a, an area 3D in a corner. Um, you might wanna attach this to some sort of graphic or some visual thing, um, but I guess I'm being lazy today, it happens. So I'm gonna click on my uh, plus 
plus button up there and this time not a mesh instance 3d but an area body uh, or an area 3d sorry so area 3d is what we need for this one so i've created a new area 3d but it gives me a warning it needs a collision shape so we can do that quite easily add ourselves a collision shape to it and then we need to just decide what that is so we can make this um i suppose a box some sort of box what what sort of size and shape do we want it to be maybe two by two something like that um, and we also probably need to put that somewhere so we can find it and walk into it. So I'm going to just move this particular box collision shape thing that I've made to that back corner there like that. Actually, maybe I need to make that a bit bigger. Let's go four by four. Yeah, cool. All right, there it is there. So basically that back corner is going to be the area I run to and that's going to trigger the new level. You might want to put a sign there or some sort of graphic, right? But we're not done yet. So we've got to actually signal this area 3d back to our world script and guess what we haven't even made one yet so next we're going to scroll to the top click on the world root node and then on that little scripty button thing click on that so world.gd create and that just extends our node 3d like this so this is our current world um, script with nothing in it so we want to like i said signal that new area 3d through so we find our area 3d in our node list click on it come across to our inspector window thing but click on the node list and then come down to body entered double click and yep we want to signal it through to the world script so connect that and there it is there it'll get a little green thing cool so function on area 3d body entered body pass well we're not going to pass are we we're going to actually turn this into something so we want to go um, if body dot is in eh, group man one day i will uh, become a good typer if our body is in group player what are we going to do well we want to get um tree and it's going to be our um the last uh the last or the next level isn't it so our next level we called what was it like level two or something so what we want to do is excuse me um get tree um it's going to be dot change scene and then we need to have our path so it's going to be res colon oops forward slash forward slash and i think it'll just be level 2 dot tscn won't it because that's oops tscn actually you know what i don't know why i always start typing things in and trying to guess if we delete that right we can just find the actual thing we just made and drag it in there there we go, that was easier, wasn't it? Oh, I've double, double thingy to, hang on. Duh, duh, duh. There we go. All right, so if body is in group player, and we can double check that, click on our player, find our um, ready thing up the top here. So add to group player, so it is. So if the body that enters this shape that we just made is in the group player, we want to get the tree, change scene to level two. So we're basically saying, if our player walks on this box, change to level two save that but we also need to do one more thing i think we're also going to put in here um global dot uh current level equals two like that um that i hope will do the trick all right so we save that we now need to work on our uh ui don't we because we need to get that level stuff showing up so, back. so let's work our way into our ui now so this is our ui as it stands at the moment what we need to do let's get our 2d view up right so what we that was a bit exciting what we need to do is basically we're going to duplicate this gear to this side and then we can just change the the setup here so let's grab our lives let's duplicate Oops, almost deleted it. That would have been fun. And I think label three, duplicate. There we go. So we've now got a label four. That's our label four, basically, is it not? So let's move that over. Do, 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 do. And there should be our lives two. Perfect. Move that over. Like so. Let's move that up a bit. Yeah. All right, cool. Now we want to rename lives two to be uh, level. Capital capitals would be good level I like that and we want to actually re relabel this so we click on our label 2 click over on our um, text box over there and change that to say level just like that all right save that let's jump into our code and what we need to do is just find um, one of those and duplicate it right so function lives let's grab that one copy paste and it's going to be update 
level label and instead of lives here it's going to be level and instead of global.lives it'll be global.current uh, level like that all right let's save that um we're all right i think we're probably getting there unless i've made some glaring error um i had definitely made a glaring error so let's instead of uh, even bothering with uh, going through the test let's just fix it i think i've worked this out let's first just fix up the uh the issue with the ui so let's go into a ui script um, and find so remember here this is what i keep forgetting to do i keep forgetting to add the actual function to the process so we never actually call it this needs to be update level label all right update level label that'll fix that problem but as for our level two issue uh, actually that'll be in our world script it should be changed scene i think it's to yeah to file i think that's what i might have done wrong so let's see if that is going to fix all of our problems hopefully uh and let's just try it again all right well that bit starts and the level also shows which is good there's our dead nazis so this will be the truthful moment won't it when i run onto this box <laughs> all right now another problem here but let's first look at the good things the level is showing up correctly and we've gone to the scene but i know exactly how to fix this problem so let's close it might be that you've forgotten since the first lesson like i clearly did but uh, grab your 3d view again of your level two there it is there two things we need to do so if you come up and click on these little three dots here you'll see we've got preview sun preview environment and then we can just go add sun to scene and add environment to scene and save that and now if we do that again we should overcome that problem so let me just run and avoid the shots from the nazis and hopefully we get a scene with sun and all right yes there we are level two we can see what we're doing and we should find some nazis if we uh walk around this corner i guess yep there's one he's having some issues we can deal with that at another time oh all my Nazis are having some issues in this level. So we'll need to uh, have a look at what's causing that. But that is not the problem for today. The problem for today was getting all of this working. Why aren't you walking, my friend? Oh, well. We'll work that out. All right, guys. I think that's the main points we wanted to tick off so we can now change our levels we can show our level on our um, heads up display um, and a few things like that so let's have a look at our must may might so you don't forget anything and yeah we'll come back and we'll fix up why these guards are being a bit weird uh, in another episode the main thing is to get all of our main points sorted for now so let's have a look at our must our may and our might all right what you must get done in this lesson is create a new scene to be your second level and add an area 3d to uh, and script to the current world um, um, and you also need to add that extra info to our HUD. What you might like to do is look for some other sprites or, or even just change the color of the guard sprite we already have and uh, make that a harder enemy for your second level. And what you might like to think about doing is continuing to make some more detailed and difficult levels and connecting them all up using the method you'll learn or you learned in this lesson today. So to debrief, you now have most of the basic mechanics. You can shoot and be shot. You can die. You can collect things. Um, we get animations for all of that. And you can also move to the next level. In our next lesson, we're going to add in a scoring system, just like the original Wolfenstein 3D. And the quote I'd like to leave you with this week is by Ludwig Wittgenstein. And he said, if people never did silly things, nothing intelligent would ever get done. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.